All right, and we're in. Uh, so we're watching David Williams, Paul Reitzel, and Tom Gwevin as they face off against Eugene Harvey, Rich Hohen, and Andrew Cuneo. Uh, we're watching the match right now between... Wait, 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 wait. Who are we? I'm Rashad Miller, and you're Jacob Van Moonen. That's correct. And we are here at Grand Prix Providence. Yeah. In the smallest state in the states, Rhode Island. Okay. It's a beautiful city. If you have a chance, you should definitely check it out. Kind of. <laughs> Bomber core from Rich Owen here. That's going to be really strong considering that Paul Reitzel has a, an Azorius Arrestor and a Daring Skyjack in his hand. Now, we actually saw this um, this team last round, but uh, we wanted to stick with kind of the bubble matches so we can see people who, you know, are fighting for their lives here. And Rich Owen actually has a very aggressive Burrows deck, so this is probably the worst card in his deck. Wow. Probably. I don't know. I saw Bella Lizard. Did you? Oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I was over I there forgot, watching you I while forgot, you guys were in the I booth. I forgot. So. Second, second <laughs> verse. Second verse. His deck is really good. That's all I'm trying to say. That's all. Yeah, that's his all deck I was very good. Say. I yeah, agree. His deck's very good. But there's a Darren Skyjack over here. And, and if anybody's going to out Boros Richard, uh, Rich Horn, it's going to be Paul Rietzel. That's what he does. I think there's yeah. too many E's in his name. And he's all about the white weenie. Yeah, he is. I think we need to fix Paul Rietzel's last name. Too many vials. Yeah, I think that last E is not there it, in, it sounds in like the it reality be, world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Ember Beast. That makes that bomber core a lot better. It does. Yeah, currently uh, Rich, without any uh, white lands in play, he's going to want to draw one of those, yeah, obviously. I mean, we saw a game like this before. This is how he likes to start off his match. He likes yeah. to <laughs> run it out there, mono red, you know. Transition into yeah. the Burroughs deck. Transition into Burroughs games. Yeah. Late game one, a little bit of game two and three. Yeah, I mean, if this were, and Rich Hohen for, for many years was considered easily the best limited player in the world. Oh, yeah, definitely. There was, I mean, there would be a limited GP, and he would be in the top eight of each. Yeah, pretty much. Like, yeah, with a startling consistency. Even even PTs. I, like, I remember there was, like, a multiple-year stretch where every single limited PT, he was in the top 16. So, Richie Hohn, master at work. He's setting up his um, his battalion triggers right now. He's got his third creature on board. Yeah, and uh, Paul's going to get in there with the Daring Skyjack. Uh, he knows he's not going to get a block because next turn, Rich is just going to uh, bomber cord away. Paul Reitzel just stretched, just reaching for a little bit of value. And the arrestor is going to give him an extra turn of keeping his daring side, side jack around. Maybe. I mean, what around. could also happen here is uh, Rich Hohen could play some type of threaten effect, because I saw multiple oh, yeah. of those in his deck when I was watching oh, him. Yeah. And, 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 and if he does that, it's a blowout. Yeah, we actually saw a lot of hasty uh, creatures come out. He has um, the Viashino, and he also has um, the um, Sky Knight Legionnaire. Nice. Both and really good cards. Yeah, both really good cards, and they can enable Battalion out of nowhere. He also has Fireman Angel, but that's not that. There's a threat and effect that you were talking about. Yeah. Traitor's Instinct. Yep. Nine. That's a lot of damage to take nine out of nowhere. Yeah, I mean, he just took seven. He just, uh, you know, Rich yeah. just one for zero to... It was pretty good. Yeah, killed the arrestor with the bomber core activation, and now there's just a, a skyjack over on the other side for Paul Rizzo, which isn't. It, I mean, it can threaten to trade with one of these creatures, but. Yeah, I mean, it, it, at this point, it's basically just a. Uh, it's a lava spike, you know. Right. It has to attack because the bomber core is just going to deal with it immediately. There's six mana. This must be something beefy. Of course, there's a cord. Yeah, and that's pretty good here. I mean, uh, two 3-3 three, three bodies against Rich's board. Uh, you know, 3-3 three, three can trade with that Warmind Infantry. It provides a little bit of card advantage for Paul to get back into this game. Um, another one can eat that Bomber Core, so Rich would essentially be trading the Bomber Core for the Skyjack. Yeah, exactly. So in with the three, the Battalion Trick is going to get rid of the, the Skyjack. And now, uh, Paul has to decide, does he want to trade? Does he want to... Just he, get a free creature out of that bomber core, and take a bunch of damage. And he's uh he's kind of you know up so against a rock and a, like he's between a rock and a hard place here. So he's gonna just go ahead and try to trade. But uh, Rich also has some blood rush in his deck. I saw some rubble belt makas and There's stuff like one that in his when hand I was right now. Oh well, that that works out pretty well for him. 
So he can just, you know, either save his Bomber Corps or his War Mine Infantry. Probably his War Mine Infantry at this point. Oh, the oh Bomber no. Bomber Corps. Interesting. You know, the Bomber Corps is, is a guaranteed damage with a, a Battalion trigger. Uh, yep. Is that value more than, um, you know, the four damage that the War Mine can force through, maybe? I mean, I didn't think it was, but, uh, you know, based on the way that Paul has played the game thus far, it, it kind of seems like the Bomber Corps is, you know, there are a lot of cards that Paul hasn't been playing, despite him having so much mana of every single color available yeah. to him. So he might just think, oh, Paul's just got a handful of one toughness guys. Now, All I, I need to do is protect this. Now, Paul Rizzo actually has an alive and well in his hand, which the life gain could bring him back, but right now he would only gain the one life from the alive token that he had. But you yeah. know, it's, it's two, it's, right? Isn't it two for each creature? Uh, yeah, is it a congregation? Two, yeah, it's, two. Yeah. It's, it's two for each creature. But um, he just had three creatures in play. Maybe, I mean, is the play to, to block more conservatively and to try to play the alive and well game? It might be. I mean, here he's going he's gonna to gain four and get a three, three, and a one, two. Oh. Ooh, or that's a pretty good card. He, War I mean, they both have War Main Avengers. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah, but Helix Angels. Yeah. Those things are pretty good. Well, it's, I mean, I... Uh, now, do you ever play Alive and Well as just Well? Yep. This target's what? Um, I, okay. I have, once. Yeah. You must have been pretty desperate. Yeah, I lost the game anyway. <laughs> I didn't have green man, I think. All right, so, so the Bomber Corps is going to deal one damage to the Clown, Clown Raptor. Yeah, and that means that the Clown Raptor can't just uh, bump up against the Bomber Corps or has the Snare Squad. If it blocks, it's going to have to chump here. Yeah, and the Snare and Squad taps down the Fire Main Avenger, so. Paul Ritz was only left with a 1-2 um, that has one damage, and he's not going to block. He's yeah. going to let it come through. So he's going to drop down to 3 here. And, uh, ooh, a Lobber Crew. And when you're at three life, Lobber Crew is a pretty dangerous thing to see. Three turn clock, possibly two turns, depending on if any multicolor spells are in Rich Horn's hand. I mean, this Alive Well now is going to do a lot of work. It's going to jump Paul back up to nine. It's going to give him a 3-3 three, three body, which is incredibly relevant given the board state. And, I mean, that's also going to turn on his battalion yeah, for next turn. That, that's so then, if, I mean, if he starts helixing, he's probably going to win the game. Fire well, right? Main Avenger is very good. I mean, it's, it's a 3-3, three, three, which is bigger than a lot of the Burl's creatures. But once you get to attack and activate its battalion triggers, it's really hard to lose. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty hard. <laughs> I, mean, you can, I mean, it's still possible. Yeah, sure. But you're in a pretty good shape. When you kill the creature every turn, gaining three life. Not only are you getting back, climbing back into the game, you're <laughs> you're taking your opponent out of the game as well. See, so here Paul's got a chance what? to be greedy or not to be greedy. He could play the alive well, jump back up to nine, uh, be reasonably stabilized, yeah, or he could play Night Watch. Uh, oh wow! You know, Night Watch is going to make that alive well like almost a coup de gras. I think you just have to go with the alive well, but he's oh he's, yeah. yeah, he says he just has to use it. And, and, I mean, I, I can get behind that. I would have made the same play. Right. I mean, that's, that's being really greedy if you're going to try to survive at three life against, an act, well, it's not an active lava crew, but next yeah. turn being an active lava crew and your opponent being brawls. Yeah, and your him having a bomber core in play that can yeah. shoot you. Yeah, so that's two damage. All he has to do is find one more damage. Just one more damage. <laughs> But even here, uh, I mean, Rich is in a really bad spot now. It's like Paul's considering an actual attack here. That's a really risky attack, and I don't really think there's any reason to. I don't know. And Rich definitely does not have a removal spell for your your Avenger, he would have used it by now. Um, like, next turn you're going to start helixing. You send in with the Raptor, but then, like, you can just lose to a Blood Rush card. Yeah, I feel like you need to just posture yourself, you know, Paul Rizzo, as the defensive deck right now, at least for this turn. You need to yeah. survive until you can untap and then use your Battalion Trigger from your Fire Main Angel to, I mean, basically 
win the game. Yeah, I mean, when, when you activate the battalion on the fire main avenger, like, you're going to kill that bomber core, you're going to jump back up to 12 life, and then you're going to have a night watch just completely gum up the ground. And you're dealing, you know, nine damage, possibly. Eight yeah. to nine damage. Exactly. You can deal me three, four, five, six, seven if you tap that if I attack with both. So if you need two gold cards or something that kills me. They're doing, they're doing the Boros math over there. Yeah, I think they are. Uh, and Ooh. the Boros math says that he can only deal seven or eight damage. This, this was a that's a decision. surprising, yeah that's, yeah, that's a surprising play to me. But I mean, these people are... Well, there's Punish the Enemy. I don't know if that was part of the consideration. Yeah, they, I don't think they considered that. But this, I think this is still only eight damage. And Bottom no, is one the card, lower so that curve, is yep. nine. Wow. Yeah. The one card they didn't consider? Yeah, I mean, perhaps attacking there was not the best play. Well, I mean, we could see that it turns out is six damage out of nowhere. Yes. Where, you know, a, a lot of the Boros creatures, two damage out of nowhere, three damage out of nowhere, but six is a lot. Uh -oh. Ooh, wow. Well, now we're looking at uh, Tommy Guevin as he battles against Andrew Cunio and a Master of Cruelties. Oh, man, Master of Cruelties? We need to get that one on the screen, Master of Cruelties, because that's his card that you don't see a lot. Oh, yeah, and it's got Death Touch and First Strike, it's which is a dangerous combination. But wait, it can only get attacked by itself. Oh, well, I mean, that's kind of a shame, except that... It deals one damage. It... Right? If it attacks and, and isn't and it blocked, then it just puts you at one. Oh, yeah, I forgot. And that's pretty good. It doesn't deal damage, though. Well, right? now it has Death Touch twice, which is pretty nice. Well... <laughs> I, I, yeah. It's a little nice. So Master of Cruelties is just going to cause problems... Righteous Authority coming in. And that's... Uh, and is coming in. Yeah, so I believe that's six, seven... Yeah, that's lethal. One, two, three, four, eight. five, it's six, eight. seven, eight. It's three cards, isn't that nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. eight. It's eight. All right, and Tavern Swindler b being activated <laughs> here. Let's see. This is this is the swindle heard around the world. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Normally, the tavern swindler is just a two-two. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's a gutter skulk. But yeah. I mean, here's where he shines. Here's where he becomes a gutter skulk plus. I've actually never activated <laughs> this. I don't think. And here it's definitely right. Like it has obviously because if you don't, you lose. And right, if you so if you win the flip, you obviously have a chance. Yeah, so. yeah, you just don't die right now. Yeah. <laughs> but tavern swindler, uh, pay three life, flip a coin. If you win a flip, you gain six life. So it's not it's not a fair deal, I guess. Because yeah. <laughs> the tavern swindler always gets the three life. You may get, you know, six life back. Yeah, that's why he's a swindler. You know, that's you never play a game with a guy who's who's a swindler by profession. Yeah, that's uh, or if, if it were fair, it would just be like <laughs> tavern merchant or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or just tavern guy. <laughs> Whereas, like, if you lose the flip, then you lose the life. But if you win yeah. the flip, you gain the life. But no, you always you always lose the life, but you sometimes gain more. Oh, swindle, swindle. <laughs> okay, so he goes down to four. He's actually at, at four life and not five, because you have to pay three life for Tavern you Swindler. Flip? Yeah. And... <laughs> well, the celebration sounds as if... Tom has won the flip. He has won the flip. Look at that. He has won the flip, so he does not die this turn. Now, usually, you know, with such good results from the Tavern Swindler, <laughs> one might want to to partake in his, his goods again. The problem is, is that at this point, he can no longer partake in the Tavern Swindler's goods because he no longer has any more life to play. Yeah. So, you know. okay, if, if we look at this seriously, we, um, <coughs> Tom needs to get rid of the, the Humongous Flyer. Yeah. That Humongous Flyer is just, just causing too many problems. Um, 
it looks like he's got a, a fistful of Blood Rush creatures, but those aren't going to do any good here. I mean, he, he really needs a removal spell that kills that flyer. And if right. he doesn't have, like, an Aerial Predation or a Dread Boar or um, Killing Glare, or Grizzly he, Spectacle, then he just loses. Yeah. He does not have any of those cards. So I think he's going with the attack with all of my non-Defender, non-Master of Cruelties creatures. Yep. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which obviously isn't lethal. Andrew Cunio is probably just going to take it. He's wondering why he shouldn't yeah. just take ten damage. Why shouldn't I just take ten? I mean, I would probably just block a Shambler. I mean, it's you never know new. when you get, like, Wrecking Ogre, Giant Growth or something. I mean, that's still not twelve more damage. Yeah, it is, isn't is it? it? Yeah. Wrecking Ogre. Plus three, plus three, double strike, and then plus oh, three, yeah, plus okay. three. That's exactly 12 more damage. <laughs> I, I guess those two exact cards <laughs> could do it. He has the mana for them. And there is, I mean, there is a Gorehouse Chainwalk um, <laughs> Crasher in uh, Tom Gwevin's hand. So yeah, uh, nothing else. Actually, there's a, looks like there's a Gertar Swine also. But was that just a scoop? Yeah, it looks like Tom just conceded. So apparently he didn't have the wrecking over. No, he only had nine. He only had nine damage and blood rush in his hand. That's it. Not enough. I mean, if he had armed dangerous there too with the rampager, Magic also good enough. Well, arm is armed dangerous and sorcery. You have to you have to get that one out yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. There weren't a lot. Let's go over to table A and look at David Williams <laughs> versus Eugene Harvey because yeah. they just got off to the. Up and running, and we have a Thrall, Parasite, and a Syndicate of Tight. So are we looking at a dedicated Extort deck here? Well, it looks like he's also playing blue, because I see a Bane Alley Broker and an Aetherize in Dave's hand also. But, I mean, at this point, it, any extra mana that Dave has is going to be put to super strong use. Uh, he's just... He's got two different Extort creatures on the table. There's an attack. Do you, do you like my guy better than your guy? And I think I think Eugene's going to hold on to that Beetle Form Mage. I mean, it has the potential to just angel out a game. So a third land for David Williams, and it's going to pass the turn. Yeah, it looks like all of his remaining cards have blue mana in their casting costs, so not not a good thing for him. But, I mean, he's not in a bad position. He can always cast a spell and then pay two extra mana to gain two more life. Yeah, as long as he's hitting these land drops, and even if he doesn't, you know, necessarily... Right, he doesn't have the blue, but he does have another planes, at least in his hand. I say there's a couple, and he has a planes and a swap. Ooh, it's going to be hard to extort Eugene out of this one, though. <laughs> because he just jumped up to 24, thanks to Cerule Gatekeepers. Those guys like to gain some life. Seven likes a lot of life to gain from one card that's also a creature. I like that guy a lot. It's very. I think it's one of yeah. the the top two gatekeepers. It's top three, I'd say. It depends. It depends. Top four if you have more of Obsidat. <laughs> 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 it's called Cerulee Gatekeeper. Yeah. So uh, Beetle Four Mage going to jump into the air, making itself into a four-four. Eugene uh, continuing to advance his board state with a Croconura. Yep. Now you you obviously would love to have that down before you play your Cerule Gatekeepers because those guys like to evolve whatever creatures you have already. Oh yeah, big butts. I like them. No lies. That's one of the reasons why the green and blue Gatekeepers are so good is because they're on color for Simic and the four toughness is so good with things like Shamble Shark and Croconora and exactly Clavin Raptor or whatever. So David Williams did find his blue mana. It comes into play tapped in the form of Demir Guildgate, but. Next turn, he's going to be able to play, you know, his choice of those two blue cards, one of them being uh, a Bane Alley Broker, which can translate into some card advantage over time. Some card selection, quality selection in the, um, in the immediate future, but it's going to take some time as we see an attack and a pump with, from the Beetleform Mage. It's going to drop David Williams down to six. He's run out of time, actually. Yeah, I mean, he does have the Aetherize in his hand, so he can Aetherize double extort this turn when uh, Eugene goes for an attack. And he, that might just be good enough. 
He's definitely playing the go whatever you got. Go ahead, attack me. Um, Do I, it. Eugene Harvey's a smart guy. He, he may see something, something's up, but I don't. You know gotta if smell something. If, they, it, if your opponent just hit that blue land, yeah. like just got to untap it, and then they say go. I mean, Eugene also is not somebody who plays a lot of Magic recently, so I don't know if Aetherize yeah. is really the thing he's going to expect the exactly. most. Exactly, like he could be expecting a Hussar patrol or something like that. Yeah. But it is Aetherize, double extort. So that happens. The Beautiform Mage goes back to the hand with the Cerulean Gatekeeper. Probably not the two creatures you wanted to go back to hand. So maybe yeah. this was a good attack from Eugene Harvey, where he was expecting Aetherize to be the card. And so he's going to get value out of double um, evolve triggers yeah. on both of his creatures and seven more life. It's actually, you know, like that's one of the reasons why Aether Eyes seem not necessarily the best thing. Like you've, we've all been blown out by it. We've all blown people out by it with it. But yeah. sometimes it, you know, it's just too little too late. And it's not a card that gets you on the board when you need it to. It's a card that kind of just keeps you alive. Yeah, and Dave... David definitely needed to stay alive. He he was facing the lethal attack there, so that was only that was the only play he could do to in order to keep playing this game. Yeah, but I mean now he's got a Bane Ally Broker with double extort trigger again. These double extort triggers are going to start piling up, and Eugene Harvey's not going to be dangerously low. Yeah, he's going to gain 14 in total off of these two Cerulean Gatekeepers. Like he's at 18 now. Uh, he would be at 11 if it weren't for that Gatekeeper trigger. Now he's going to jump back up to 25. I mean, the, a game that David really could have expected to extort out thanks to having turn one Thrall Parasite, turn two Cynic of Tithe. This is just completely out of range because of the Cerulean Gatekeepers. Yeah. Um, but right now, I think David Williams just wants to get this game going as long as possible so that that Bane Alley Broker can start trading in these useless cards into, you know, some things that he can play and extort and build his board position. I don't know mobile. about this Williams Guevin guys. I mean, they're swindling, they're brokering, <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're a bunch they're of extorting. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, I mean, you know, it's fair. shady stuff going it's on down a, here. <laughs> they, they dwell in the alleys and in <laughs> and I don't, I don't know where, where do people extort. Where does that happen? Uh -huh. That probably happens. That that happens more out in public. Well, what extortion? Uh, you know, I imagine you'd be extorted in a whole manner of places. Yeah, that could happen in the alley, too, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Spurious Skywatch comes down, and that's going to put a couple of counters on. Uh, it's going to put a counter on Croconora. It should also put a counter on the Cloudfin Raptor. It did put a counter on the Cloudfin Raptor. Cloudfin Raptor had a counter removed by Thrall Parasite. Really? Yes. Wow. Haven't seen that ability used in a while. I think I've only used that ability like twice. <laughs> okay, so beta form mage, I believe it is pumped, and it is all of our creatures are attacking. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Six of it in the air. Yeah, so David's gonna have to chump this Karkonura. He can only do so with Thrill Power Sword or Syndicate Tithes. Not too high. Now, is David Williams in the position where he can activate his thrall again to make some trade? Is that an option, or is his life total just too low? Uh, he, he has no trading value here. I mean, he can activate the thrall to take counter off the cloud from Raptor, but it's not really going to do much. So there was just a chump yeah. on the Parkinora. And he's fallen to three now. Yeah. And, and that's it. He can't even up. activate the Bane Alley Broker because it was uh, yeah. detained by Asperia Skywatch. No lizard guy. Hypothetically, he could have activated it on his opponent's turn and searched for that second Aetherize. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess if he had a second one, that's something he could have considered doing. Probably not really a card you want to play two of. Having two of that in your opening hand is pretty rough. <laughs> well, I mean, if, one deck has, if the deck has one, he's... Get it just gotta have them all. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna go back and watch. Um, this is Paul Ritzel versus Rich Hogan. Hohen again, and um, Richard Hohen starting off with that bomber core again, alongside a frontline medic, and looks like uh, the Mastiff is holding them both at bay. Probably not for long. Probably not for long.
third land. Looks like Paul Reese was missing the blue mana. He would love to have that cloud friend wrapped in that he's pointing at. You could tell he wishes that that guy was in play right now. Yeah, I mean, he has a Skymark rock in his hand, too. That's a really good one. It's one of my favorite uncommons in Return to Ravnica. And here comes a clue stone, it looks like. Not sure what colors it is. Oh! oh. A lantern. Even better. It's like all the clue stones in yeah. one. You can't sacrifice and draw a card later on, but I mean that's fine. Yeah, let's get Chromatic Lantern up because this, you know, this is a rare that comes from Return to Ravnica, so you don't get to see it a lot. But um, you know, it it enables you to play all five colors. You know, it's a pretty exciting card. People have played it in constructed, and you know, it it came out in a in a format which was RTR where playing all five colors really wasn't a thing that you really wanted to do. In, in a draft deck or even in sealed deck, maybe sealed deck, depending on how po on the power level of all your cards. Mm -hmm. But now that we have Dragon's Maze in the mix, it's it's the perfect mana fixing that you would love to have. You kind of like to. Yeah, see I mean, it. I've had a lot of decks that were completely saved by me getting a Chromatic <laughs> Lantern pass to me in pack three. Like, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for opening that rare and then passing it to me. Yeah. My deck before now was, was unplayable. Yeah. It, was, it was just <laughs> unplayable. So Chromatic Lantern, <laughs> not exactly enabling anything right now because, you know, we already had the mana, to the white mana for the... Um, yeah, I mean, at this point, Rich Hone can keep attacking with all of his guys because they're just going to become indestructible with the frontline medic. Yeah, I mean, that's what frontline medic does. He stands in the front of the line and makes yeah. sure no one dies. It's, his, it's the plan. That is the plan. I'm I mean, he also counters Sphinx's uh, revelations. You know, that's, a, <laughs> that's an interesting job for a medic. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, I, I mean, I'm already impressed that it could just stop anything from dying to anything. <laughs> but then, you know, X spells. That just had to be a little tack on. <laughs> to be honest, I was actually quite surprised that that card has seen as much play as it has in Constructed. That it has uh, or it has not? That it has. It's seen a little bit of play. Yeah, I mean, it's I a 3-3 three, three for 3. It's pretty good, actually. And and now with Revel Revelation, so good. And Rakdos Return. Yeah. Not the best against the decks that want to be playing Frontline Medic, though. Yeah, Rakdos I, Return. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's true, but... <laughs> you never know. I guess you have to throw the creature decks a, a bone to, to deal with... Um, Revelation. Yeah, Revelations, but yeah. Ba back to Limited. Yes. Lava Crew hits the board for Richard Horn. And uh, Paul Reese was at 9 life. He does have a Fire Main Avenger here, though. So, I mean, he plays that. Like, he can block that Sky Knight Legionnaire and just prevent a little bit of damage from coming in. That's going to be a, at least something. And then the Fire Main Avenger, if it connect, like if, if he gets to untap with it, that can take out that frontline medic. Right. And so then he's back in the game. Yeah, so that, that attack from Hoenn leaves the, the gates open for uh, all-in from Paul Rito, which is going to net him two life thanks to the life, the life, um, the life link trigger from Battalion. Yep. And now Fireman Angel for Paul Rizzo hits the board, threatening to take over the game, as it does. It's quite a good card. Right now it's the biggest creature on the board. It's tied in power and toughness with the frontline medic, but it flies, so there's, no, there's only one other flyer on the battlefield, which is the Skyline Legionnaire. So that's the only creature that can really interact with it in combat and if, if if you don't have a creature that can interact with fireman angel in combat it can just run rampant on your board position there's an attack again from richard hohen sticking with the plan attack with all the creatures i believe the battalion trigger targeted the fireman angel yes so just taking five here Dropping down to six. Yep. I mean, uh, potentially five or four because of Lobber Crew, but. And none of Rich Hohen's creatures died because they all had, became un indestructible because of yep. the Frontline Medic Battalion trigger. Ember Beast is the follow up. Back to Paul Rietzel. Yeah, now uh, Paul's definitely just going to swing with, I don't know, enough that he can kill that Frontline Medic with the Avenger. And the, the Ember Beast, obviously going to gobble up a Mastiff, but, I mean, Small such things life. are worth it when you're getting two life from the Mastiff's lifelink and you get a free Helix out of it. Back. 
Looks like we got game threes all around, so we have another long one. Nice. So with all these guys coming in, then uh, Fireman Avenger uh, gets triggered, and it, it takes out that medic. Jumping Paul back up to nine here, and then he's going to go all the way back up to 11, thanks to the Mastiff. That's actually huge. It's huge, huge. Yeah, five life is not a light. You can't, you can't laugh at getting five life when you're facing down a very aggressive Boros deck, and, and you're struggling to stay alive. And, you know, I say struggling. I use that term loosely because there is a fire main Avenger yeah, over yeah, yeah. on one side. But and now it, he's got a rock, too, yeah, and, and, and a snare squad. So this, this, this game just turned around. Super uh, hard. Uh, I mean, it's pretty unbelievable that Rich Hohen had, you know, two drop into Frontline Medic into Sky Knight Legionnaire, and, uh, and Paul was able to just weather the storm. You know, he, he even had a Cloudfin Raptor just, you know, eaten away by a Bomber Corps with no repercussion at all for Rich. Fireman Avenger is just a very powerful card. It, it is. It's, it's almost as powerful or more powerful than the Skyrock. Skymark Rock. I'd say it's more powerful than Skymark Rock. Which says a lot, because Skymark <laughs> Rock is pretty much. insane. I mean, he's got two insanely powerful four, ma four mana gold 3-3 three three flyers. So it's a theme deck is what you're saying. Yes, he's got a theme deck. The theme is 3-3 three three flyers for four mana that cost two different colors. Yes, and have unbelievable abilities. Triggers. They have to be triggered abilities. Yes. It's, true. it's true. Interesting theme. That is an interesting theme. We should talk to him about that. <laughs> <laughs> were, were, were you building a, a commander deck? Built, so were you going for the, that, that were you going for the, the four mana gold 3-3 three, three flyer deck? With triggered abilities? That's uh, my favorite deck yeah. to try. <laughs> I oh, opened it sealed. That's so lucky. <laughs> so here's three mana. Massive raid. It's a really good draw step. Gets rid of one of the problems, but this mar this rock is still gonna just. It's not gonna kill a creature every turn, but it's it's gonna return one of them to to Richard Horn's hand. Probably not something that will trigger the lob the lava crew. Hopefully. But, you know, some annoying creature that's getting in the way of progress. Yeah, I mean, he's probably just going to bounce that bomber core, but every little bit helps in these burrow smears. Like, you're always looking for the math to do exact damage, and when one creature's constantly getting bounced back to your hand, it's mm -hmm. just super hard. So it looks like uh, Paul declared his targets, but <laughs> I'm not sure which one. It looks like the rock is going to bounce the bomber core, and the ember beast is getting tapped by the snare squad. Rich making like the expected blocks here. I'm gonna take five and drop down to four now. Oof. Ooh, centaur healer, that's gonna jump Paul Rizzo up to 13 life, putting him further out of reach of the Globber crew that we just saw right there that's gonna And perhaps the well. punish the enemy that Rich Owen might draw. Yeah. <laughs> that card can come out of nowhere. No one expects. Now, Rich Horn did draw another Sky Knight Legionnaire, which gives him a 2-2 hasty flyer. It also gives him a trigger on that lob lava crew, to, uh, untap trigger. So, Yeah, I mean, not the worst card here, but That's six it's, damage. you know, he's still dead on board. Well, there is that thing. Yeah, so he's going to need to, I mean, at this point he's already drawn his card. It looks pretty bad. He's going he's gonna to need to chump block next turn in a lot of different ways, and uh, one of the Sky Knight Legionnaires is going to get bounced back to his hand by the Sky Mark Rock, and then he's going to need to chump the Sky Mark Rock with the other Legionnaire. That's exactly what's going through Rich Horn's mind right now. As he stares at that Legionnaire, it looks like a good card. It does a lot of things to the board. It puts a lot of damage on Paul Rizzo, but right now, the life total that matters the most is Rich Horn at and it's for life. He needs to preserve that life to it before he can even think about trying to win this game. Yeah. It just doesn't really look like it's there. So we may see Rich Owen, the <laughs> limited master of days, days of yore. Even maybe today. I haven't 
I mean, played against him recently. A, he's he's, like he's seven one job. here. He's definitely seven one right now. So there's a activation from Lava Crew. Paul's gonna do it on an eleven. Two mana, plus one more. That's three. So on top of the Lava Crew, there's the Sky Knight Legionnaire, and there is Bombacor, and we are just going to block says Richard Hohen. So it looks like uh, Paul Ritz was it's lining all his creatures up, and he can see that he's going to be able to get through his Skymark Rock um, through due to the bouncing ability. Yeah, he has and lethal, and Rich is tapped out. So he's he's just going to you know he taps down a Legionnaire, he bounces a Legionnaire, mm -hmm. then he has four guys attacking on the ground, and there are only three blockers, so he's going to get through for one damage there, and then three damage gets through in the air. So he's got lethal on board, yep. and Rich is tapped out. Looks like Paul's just making sure that there's something he hadn't missed. Yep. So, again, for those of you... Uh, Looks like he's going to go a different route. He's huh. considering bouncing the, the Bomacore and tapping the Ember Beast. That's interesting. And there's forcing through damage. This looks a little more conservative, though. It's interesting. So the, the Ember Beast is getting tapped. The Bomber Core is going back to Rich Horn's hand. So now Rich has the opportunity to block with these three creatures. And it's going to be at one life, looks like. Yeah, I mean... He lives. All right, so Rich goes to one. I mean, not a lot yeah, of possible I mean, blocks, but he does keep himself alive. Yeah, I suppose like there, like he could have just been dead that turn. So, gotta Paul's, be happy. Paul's down to ten. Um, Rich picks up a mountain. Probably not going to help out right now. He has a lava, uh, a cobble brute, in his hand. That was the only other card that we hadn't known. That hasn't been bounced already. And that's it. Yeah. Hand is extended. Paul Ritu is going to win his match for his team 2 1. And we are going to go over to the David Williams and Eugene Harvey match. This was an interesting matchup. We had David Williams, who had the um, extort deck splashing blue. Ooh, and a woodlock crawler. That's going to be great in this matchup. And then uh, it looks like it's ruling the board right now. Yeah. There's also a. Ooh, nice. So looks like Eugene Harvey sideboarded in Fairy Imposter, which. Uh, Sideboard? How you know he's not running that one main deck? <laughs> I'm a fan of the Fairy Imposter. I mean, he's not a real fairy, but you know, especially if you have triggered abilities. Like all of the ones we see over on Eugene Harvey's side of the board, there's a lot of things that why not bounce your why not bounce it again for a blue mana? Yeah, and I mean with uh, the Haunter of Night Vale definitely stems the bleeding a little bit, but now Eugene's going to start getting in some really serious damage. He has it, two three power flyers on the table, and they might be two power flyers because of that Haunter, but at any point a removal spell could take that Haunter away, and any green creature starts making those flyers have more power thanks to Ivy Laden Denizen. So it looks like uh, David Williams just played a, a Bane Alley Broker, so possibly Ooh. gives him, a, if he has enough time, he can find some cards to get him out of this situation. Yeah, so here he is uh, coming in for five damage. Those counters are being put on by Ivy Lane Dennison. Yeah. But the uh, counters are counteracted by the Haunter of Night Vale on David's side of the table. So Bane Alley Broker takes a planes and... and and trades it in for a a Thrall Parasite. Extra mana is going to extort. That's going to bring David back up to 12. It's going to tie us at 12 off, looks like. There's still a lot of power on the board over for Eugene Harvey. Oh, yeah. And that Beetle Form Mage only makes it more, so. Two mana pre-combat, are we going to see another green creature, or is this this is just a pop on a beta form mage to give it flying mm -hmm. and make it a 4-4 four four that becomes a 3-4 because of the horror? Yeah, so he's uh, getting in there for 8 in the air. So 
So Cloudfront and Raptor comes down. Kind of late to the party, but just in case. Main alley broker. Ooh. And takes the planes, replaces it with a, a swamp. Not really what David Williams needed. And it's looking like uh, Eugene's going to steal this one away, and then everything is going to be on the back of that's, Tom Gwethin and Andrew Cunio. That, that's correct. All of the marbles are happening at the C match, so let's jump to there before it all ends. And here we have it. We have. Is that a core? Is that a Gorehouse chain walker with the counter on it? And agoraphobia? It is. So a with the agoraphobia weapon? on that, it, it doesn't do anything because it can't block because it's been... Uh, and it doesn't attack very well. It doesn't attack very well because of that agoraphobia. Yeah, against the, uh, you have the Unleash of deck, agoraphobia is actually quite good. Yeah, it's actually good. It's a fine a card in general. Yeah. It's not very good against the Simic decks, but... We talked about that a little bit last <laughs> round. So a Concordia Pe Pegasus and a Maze Glider for Andrew Cunio, holding it down, making sure that uh, Dark Revenant doesn't get through, and a Sire of Insanity. That's insane. Let's get crazy up in here. No more hands for anyone? I mean, Tom Ooh, Gwevin and he made Tom Gwevin discard something really big. Is that a Lavania the 10th? That it looks like it is the Levani of the tenth. So if we're if we're saying who lost the Sire of Insanity game, I think it's Andrew Cunio because uh, Tom Guevin discarded a gutter, a gutter soak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good top of the library for Andrew Cunio there. Uh, veritable Cloud Goat Ranger in yeah. sign of Vitugazi. That's him a 4-4 four, four and 2-1-1 two, one, one flyers when opponents just at 5 life. So Sire of Insanity doesn't have any other abilities. So right, what, no, right now it's just, it's just a vanilla 6-4, except you know, every turn everyone has to discard their hand, which just means that they're going to play those cards out. Yeah, I mean, against the happens. blue deck, that's definitely pretty good, though, because there are a lot of cards where you're going to want to hold it. Things like you know, Aether Eyes aren't going to do anything, and yeah. Azori's Charm becomes significantly worse. Mm -hmm. So, But, you know... Facing down all of the creatures that are on the board, most of them yeah. being one ones expendable and being able to jump in front of a six four, or you know multiples jumping in front of the six four to trade if that's what wants to happen. It's side of insanity doesn't win too many races. I guess that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I I really like it. I'll first pick it. <laughs> <laughs> so Sire's getting in. Uh, looks like a bird token's going to jump in away. Life total is actually pretty low, so both these players need to preserve their life totals while trying to figure out a way to get damage through. Right now, Andrew Cunio has a 3-5 flyer. Well, he has a lot of creatures, and they're all just coming into play because Tom Guevara only has one creature that can block right now. And if it does block, it's probably going to die and has yeah, to go on I mean, top of the library. Even if he blocks the biggest guy that he can, he still dies, so... Yeah. So that, that was a lethal apple strike, and Andrew Cunio is going to win it for his team, 2-1. to one. Yeah, a super, super close match there. And remember, you need to pick up in total, you need two match wins, and here we had 